So our next guest, uh, Shoko, I saw her going to be coming up here and talking tonight. I didn't you know what this was all about. He's like, yeah, I can help you out here. And now he's standing in front of everybody. Come on up here, Shoko. Shoko is doing his business development, like, what, three years? And he said, something like that. Since I've been in the business development, since 1884? Oh, 1984. <laughs> <laughs> so the floor is yours. Thank you. And uh, like uh, when Will was speaking, uh, I, I was thinking back uh, about my projects in Toyota, and uh, they also have a very strong focus on uh, reducing wastes and, and stuff like that. So there are some stories that I personally sort of have experienced. Um, I also have a, like a, a LinkedIn article uh, where, and the title is uh, where the sufficient is not necessary. Like we normally say necessary but not sufficient. Um, so I, I sort of took, did a flip on that, and uh, where uh, so it's an it's, it's an interesting story. If you want to look it up, uh, you're welcome to. Uh, so the when when um, Eric asked me, as he said, suckered me to this uh, this evening. Um, when, whenever there's an opportunity to uh, to talk, I sort of never say no. And the the challenge is to get me to stay within uh, the ten minutes or the fifteen minutes. And and Stephen is over there is agreeing with me. So. <laughs> So I, I'll sort of get to um, a bit of a, a, almost like a transaction level topic. Um, we all go to these type of meetings, uh, networking meetings, and I personally organize a number of them uh, under the umbrella of the Alignable Alliance. And uh, a lot of us, we go to these uh, meetings or gatherings um, and we, the objective is, uh, if we think of it as part of our word of marketing, word of mouth marketing plan. And uh, we network over there and uh, the, the focus is to generate referrals uh, in, as a result of us being in, in these gatherings. So referrals is, is a, and there are organizations like the BNI, who have a very structured way of accounting for what are the amount of referrals that one brings to the table. And there are all sorts of um, discussions around the quality of the referrals and uh, what constitute a referral and stuff like that. So um, we, uh, Eric was saying earlier that you have to train your customers, right? So it's a similar thing that you have to train your net referral network to have quality referrals come back to you. And for you to train them, you have to do also some homework. So when I say you have to train your referrals, essentially it boils down to four questions that they, be, they should be able to answer for your, regarding your business. And I'll go through the questions first and then come back to those questions with an, with an example uh, to, to explain or uh, to, to share what is my take on those questions. So the first question is, how would, so if I am to be a referral for someone else or you, how do I know what is your ideal plan, right? We all see that like we have to define our ideal plan, but for the referral to work, like I need to know what your ideal plan is and how do I spot them? So it is not just knowledge of the ideal plan, but how do I know when I see one that this is someone that you would want to do business with? So that's the first one. The second one is that how do I tell someone else that what is your unique difference or your core 
uh, benefit of working with you. So that's the second one. The third one is like if I am at a gathering like this and I hear a conversation going on somewhere, how do, what is it that I will hear that will trigger me to know that I need to refer that person to you. So, and I'll, I'll get into a bit more detail later on. The fourth question is that what do you do? Like I need to know what would you do with that referral when I send it over to you? What is the first step of your marketing process? And let me go back and do these questions one by one with an example. And this is where my favorite whipping boy or example is Parag. Uh, Parag of Easy Funding Solutions. Uh, Easy Funding Solutions has a number of uh, offerings. Uh, they do a lot of things. But the example or the context I'm talking about are the loan advisory services that they have. So SBA loans. So what, so the first question I said is how do I recognize or how do I spot what your ideal client is? So the quick thing which I goes on in my mind when I am at a networking environment or on Main Street, I know that he does SBA loans. He does loans for people. So the quantum of work must be to the extent of say 500K um, it needs to be in certain businesses. So, for example, a restaurant would be a good candidate or, um, or um, there are certain industries which are not good for that, uh, for the SBA loans. So, I have more or less figured out because of my association with Parag of Easy Funding Solutions that when I look at a business, whether they are a good candidate or whether they fit into the sweet spot that he has to do business with. So if it is a micro loan, if some business is looking for a 50K loan, uh, that is not a good, good fit for a person like Easy Funding or a business like Easy Funding Solutions. So I know how to say that yes, this fits or this does not fit. So the second one in that my list was, how do I tell people why I am recommending them to this business or how, why would I recommend them to your business, right? So in this case, I say that, hey, if you go to a bank and you want a loan, most likely you will submit that loan to a business development officer and you don't really know what goes down the pike after that. Each of these banks giving out SBA loans have their own sweet spot, like their own preference of industry. What time of the year is, is it? Because if they have already met their bar, uh, targets for the year, they may not have the appetite for, the, for this type of a loan or your type of uh, business. If you go with a, an organization like Easy Funding Solutions, he knows because he was a banker himself and he knows the banks and he has a relationship with them. He will know which bank to take you to at which point in time or at that time in the financial year. And there are also other things which I talk about, which uh, I'll skip over for the sake of the uh, five to 10 minutes that I have. Uh, the, uh, the, sec the third question is, uh, how do I, what type of conversations will trigger me to know that this is a good situation where I can introduce them to Para? So uh, I'll give you an example. Um, not just bagels in Woodbridge, we're moving across town, uh, across the downtown area. And uh, I knew that we were moving to a, a building which was earlier a uh, uh, float into wellness like a, a salt and sauna type of a place it would need a lot of investment it would need a lot of modeling and 
this knowledge and the conversation I overheard of the business owner asking another person, telling another person that she was looking for a loan, sort of got me to ask her, hey, would you want to talk to someone whom I know? Take another example that uh, we were at Old Bridge, uh, the Business Alliance meeting over there, gathering over there, and there was this ice cream sponsor vendor at one corner, and there was this conversation going on about his growth plans, and he was talking to a lawyer for his MDD. That itself told me that there was an opportunity for him, or there was a need that he had to invest more on his growth plans. So these are the type of conversations that I know I should look out for if I am to refer those people to Parag. So the fourth one was that what, so there are also situations where it does not make sense for me to refer them to say certain um, business partners or, or certain contacts that I have. Say I know of a person who is who has just moved into their home. It's a new, it's a homeowner who has moved in uh, to their place. Uh, it's a new home, so most likely they won't be needing a paid job. So Bob over there, who normally I would have perhaps referred a homeowner to, in this situation it's too premature or it's the time is not right for me to refer them to Bob. So there are certain situations which tell me that yes, I need to refer and there are others which tell me that no, this is not the right time. And the fourth one is relatively simple, which is what is, I need to know what is your marketing plan. And the reason is that when we refer someone to another person, we are in fact using a part of our own goodwill, right? We are using part of our trust with another person. So I need to also know what the other person will be doing with this referral. And this is something which normally does not come to my mind straight off. So in this case, I know that if I send someone to Parag, he will make a call or he will reach out within about uh, like by that in that week in, in say two business days. And I, I sort of know that he will give the first half an hour to 45 minutes for free, offer a continuity for a small fee. And if that other person feels that uh, this is a good fit for them, then he will go back with an offer for a due diligence. What happens after that is between that person and Parag, because I don't want to get into a client consultant conversation after that, especially a financial one. But I know that these are the steps which, which he will do. And that's, that's something which is important because if I can keep on sending referrals to someone and I don't know what comes out of it, if it goes into a black box, then uh, it, it doesn't really work. It compromises my goodwill and I'll be hesitant to send referrals to that person after that. So those were the four questions. Uh, might be uh, too fast. There's a book called The Referral Engine. Uh, this, these four questions are from that book itself, so you can read more about it over there or you can ask me uh, questions regarding that. Uh, that's, that's all that I had to share today. I think I'm... <laughs> so real quick, so if everybody wants to, uh, everybody has your contact information, if they want to get that list from you, Sure. Reach out to you. Sure. Okay. So just so, reach out to Shomo for the list. So, so if you move too quick, I only gave you 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 45 minute workshop. I may even do it in 15. So I, I am more accustomed to do 90 minutes. Yeah, 90 minutes. <laughs> he's like, he's like, how long, Eric? I'm like, 